Today I'm back in the workshop with Jake, but Jake is not wearing his map deck staff uniform anymore because now Jake is a sponsored rider. Jake, what have you got in your hand? This is my new GT La Boma. I have just signed with GT and I'm about to do a bike build. Congratulations, Jake. Thank let's, you. Let's get to it. I can't wait. So, so what's drawn you to GT? Yeah, there was, there was a couple of options of people to go with. It's, it's a cool brand, isn't it? It's been, it's been around for a long time. It's it has got a, lot, it's got a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And it's on a bit of a revival now as well, I think. It yeah, It feels definitely. like it's trying to really get back into racing and competing and stuff. And you've ridden it already, haven't you? Sneaky little yeah, ride. Yeah, I got, I got a bit excited and just built it. <laughs> what are your first I impressions? Like, yeah, I mean, I rode it last night uh, and yeah, it was incredible. From what I've usually ridden, this has got a slightly slacker head angle. And it's a little bit shorter back here as well it's the, yeah it's slightly shorter on the back end because the seat tube is a lot further forward than yeah. most bikes like it's in it's almost in front of the bottom bracket which is it's a very different position than any other bike but it actually all feels super nice because you're not reaching back to clamp your seat talking of your seat your saddle is normally just trash like a tiny little yeah. thing this it's a posh new saddle and it's even got grips on the side of it for it's amazing so this is from gusset yep right so, new sponsor yep also, how, yeah. did the, how did the gusset sponsorship come about yeah, all, all, all that started with talking to the guys at uh, halo yeah who are now also supported by them for wheels halo and gusset are like all one deal together so yeah, all components, seat, seat posts. All good quality uh, stuff, stem, yeah. Stem, bars, yeah, wheels, yeah. everything. A new bike needs a new set of forks now. Yeah. I used to be very proud to be your fork sponsor. I used yeah. to rip all the logos off. Yeah. Um, now you've got more sponsorship. We're gonna put these on, but we can't, they're not actually a proper sponsor, are no, they? No, they're not. But they're just they're a just, new they're just some silver, supply silver for this. Forks, so, so Right, let's get some forks into this and we'll talk through the rest of it. So you finished the 2023 season as Rookie of the Year, didn't you? Yes. Which qualifies you for um, a place at Crankworks, which is where all this started, I guess. And, uh, yeah. And you've met an agent. Yeah, now we're, now we've uh, Resolution, so um, them guys there are... Uh, they're a sports agency. Yeah, yep. supporting me through <clears throat> getting all these all these deals effectively and just making life a little bit easier for me. Sounds like they've been really, really useful, like your deals. Yeah, super. Them, it's, been... It's, been, it's been really good for me. I'm not one for... Um, I'm not one for sending emails. Right. And they take a commission, right? But at the same time, it means that you can just spend all your time practicing and not worry um, about it. Yeah, so there's much. no. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, the worry off off yeah. my hands. So what we're fitting now is a mechanical gyro. Now, I remember you used to run a hydraulic gyro, so you could run hydraulic disc brakes. Yeah. Jay Cackington hammer action. It just wouldn't be the same without it. There we are. Look at that. So Jake, if you don't know, Jake is famous for his bar spins, like signature yeah. move. Yeah. So like. This gyro is, enables you to like spin bars, doesn't it? Without yeah, the cables getting tangled. Cables never get tangled. So yeah, for anyone wondering, um, this is actually a BMX gyro. But there is companies that make mountain bike ones, um, but they're all um, like bushings and stuff. This is a shadow BMX gyro, which is it's got a bear, it's got a sealed bearing in it, so it just lasts a lot longer. Yeah, and you take some pretty heavy hits, don't you? So yeah, and it's yeah. just a lot less maintenance, less to worry about. Yeah, I don't like stuff breaking. Yeah, they're like the cranks I'm running. It's just a lot of people wouldn't run them because they're heavy and stuff, but I'd rather stuff not break. I rode the same set of cranks like all season and they never bent yeah. and they never anything. They were just a set of steel BMX cranks and so. And the cranks are quite strange. And what Jake's just gathering up here is his own sort of handmade concoction to actually so, make sure the cranks don't spin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. So yeah, this is, this is sponsored by dad. Um, he made this. So this this bottom bracket has two flat edges. It's a horrendous design really for trying to put a bottom bracket in because you just round it, but it works. So this has got, this plate's got two flat edges, two rounded edges. So that fits on there like that. And this was all filed out from, I can't remember what he said. I think dad drilled a 14 mil hole in the middle of that and then used a file to make that shape. So you can imagine how long it took to file a bit of stainless plate. So you essentially made a clutch or aluminium plate for your cranks. Yeah, effectively that is what yeah. it is. So there's that first plate and then my cranks. Anyone that knows BMX will know what cranks they are, but they're just 22 mil steel, two piece. So, and then this plate also, same thing. Dad made and so that fits over the spacer that sits in your sprocket and then lines up with the sprocket bolt. Stop that rotating. Because so the two the two metal plates don't rotate, and then there's this plastic ring set on there. And this rubber ring sits on top of all that. 
So effectively, that's the only thing that can move because the two metal plates are fixed in a solid place. Yeah. So it just creates friction to stop the cranks spinning. Stop. And um, the reason you're doing this is because you need to be able to pedal your bike to get speed off the ramps. But what you don't want to do is your cranks to move when you're in the air. No, <laughs> That's exactly. the whole purpose, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you want to be able to look down, see your cranks, put your feet on them and land, don't you? Rather than thinking, oh, what position they're going to be in. Yeah, there is nothing worse than taking off and then your cranks not being where they were. <laughs> it's like, like someone removing the ground from you when you... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's like when, you, it's like when you, you're walking down some stairs and you miss the last step. It's like, it's really inconvenient. <laughs> I love how somewhere. agricultural it all is. It's oh, just like nothing's that, made to precision at all. It's no, just, it's just, just bomb proof. It works, yeah. <laughs> BMX stuff is. It's also great because this will take abuse all season. Massive, like 12 mil threaded bolt, or whatever that is, that just steel yeah. weighs about as much. And there's as... no torque settings for any of this. This is just do it up. This is just hopefully it doesn't snap when you tighten it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing's got any torque settings written on it. Or it's not. It's not fancy at all. I think this yeah. this entire crank set cost me. 70 quid and it's heavy isn't it, it is. it's without the bottom bracket without the sprocket the cranks are like 890 grams yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah i've tried i've tried other stuff but i just i don't want to think about stuff breaking at events that's the worst thing yeah i, I couldn't think of anything worse than your that cranks bending ruin or, your flow wouldn't it? it just if you yeah. couldn't rely on your equipment you wouldn't take off i suppose no so uh, there you go that's any road bikers solid. out there i'd love that I'd be, uh, let me feel let me feel Oh my god, yeah, that's like, that's already like turning a 50-11 or something. It's <laughs> mental. And then I'm running a 33 on the front and a 13 on the back. So I don't actually know what the ratios are, but it's hard. I yeah, that. that's a hard gear, especially when you've got all that friction to overcome as well. Yeah. 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 There's some strong legs in there somewhere. Somewhere, yeah, <laughs> for, for, the, for the short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. So this is the next exciting sponsorship announcement, I guess, is yeah. Halo. Yeah, so Halo, um, for obviously the hubs, the rims, these all, these wheels are all come built. I did check these wheels when they came, just out of interest, because obviously I used to, used to build wheels and stuff all the time. So it was, I was, I was interested, interested to know what sort of spe uh, specs they were built to. And for a 2 mil steel rounded spoke, which these are, these were built front and back wheel was every single spoke was 24 awesome. which is the very top of that scale nothing wrong with them whatsoever so, so that was nice to see no, yeah, great because you were running halo hubs weren't you yeah yeah so you're familiar with all the hub mechanism and stuff and so yeah it's, yeah, yeah uh, i've always run the you pretty much always run the the halo hubs uh, and then yeah just so i guess taking on halo as a sponsor was a like a no brainer yeah, no brainer, yeah i knew it was going to be it's good like brilliant so. yeah and maxis tires I mean, again i've always known you to run maxis tires yeah i've always run maxis now as of uh, yesterday kind of Got the knowledge that I'd be able to get supported by these guys for free tires this year, which is awesome. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully, hopefully build and that. And you, you do but... go through tires as well, don't you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wear out quite quick, but also you tend to blow them as well a bit. Yeah, you, so. yeah, sidewalls. Yeah, sidewalls and stuff landing sideways, pulling tires off rims. Yeah, that's really Often helpful. Stretches them. So here's a question for you: What have you learned from all these contract negotiations this this winter? It's oh. been intense, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 been interesting. Just uh, yeah, I guess talking to people and understanding. How everything works, really getting to know, getting to know people, speaking to speaking to brands, finding out just like the ins and outs of brands and just brands that you think are huge brands aren't actually huge brands, and it's just small teams running them, which is cool to see. Quite often in cycling, yeah, that is the way. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. So it's, it sounds like insane contact negotiations with all the brands that are kind of interested, and yeah, and are you sort of pretty happy now? You've got like a really good, really good mix of stuff that you're running, really, really happy with. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm happy with. Um, yeah, the, all all the different things I sort of chose because I wanted to wanted to ride that stuff, and I've ridden the stuff before, so it was never like a, taking a risk to ride something. It's been yeah. yeah, it's been really good. So the full rundown, then if I get it right, is GT main sponsor, title yeah. sponsor, Halo, Gusset, all part of the same family. Yeah, components. And then you've also got clothing sponsors as well by Hellfair, which yeah. is Matt Jones's brand. Yeah, which is awesome. Hellfair. I love his kit anyway. Again, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, but yeah, with with Matt now, he supported me last year after uh, after roof ride um, which was cool yeah and a helmet sponsor yeah with tsg now as well for helmets and protection knee pads shin pads all that so that's that's all the actual protection gear and have you got a, a brand name to go on your helmet uh yeah so uh, muck off are going to be supporting me for that sort of stuff keeping this bike lovely and clean and yeah all the all the helmet design and stuff is cool so you're gonna have one of the cool pink muck off helmets i think so awesome. yeah that's the plan <laughs> nice and then all these brands are all putting in product and a little bit of money and like i say the yeah, whole so like all, kind of come in all comes big. together as yeah, it's a fascinating process as to how you sort of replicate 
a wage and go, actually, can I live off this? And that's mad, because what really shocked me was your season last year, which you self-funded, like £22,000 yeah, so worth no, of travel expenses. Spent, yeah. That's like of your own money, wasn't it? Yeah, and like yeah, and winnings that you've done throughout the year and everything else. And yeah. winning an event was enough to get you to the next one. And Yeah, it all, yeah, it all added up. So That it's... blew my mind. When, what, what did you do when you've worked out that you spent that 20 horrible. grand on travel? It was horrible. <laughs> I, looking at how much I spent last year was yeah. horrible. It's, but it was cool because it was all, I mean, it was all worth it. We're, we're where we are now. So it's, it's testament to the commitment. I don't think there's a lot of people watching this that would commit 20 grand of their own money to go no, and travel. Big, and it was a big thing, but it was, yeah, it was fun and it all worked out. So it's And it's definitely dead interesting. I think the, people often say, oh, you're so lucky you've got all this, this stuff. Yeah. And you're now sponsored to ride. But like, you really put yourself out there. You train, what, 10 hours a week at yeah, least? So, yeah, probably somewhere around there, yeah. About, yeah. yeah, it's usually three times a week, three hours. Yeah. And then, obviously, yeah. And, then. and I've got to say, like, the amount of times you've come into work, like, grazed and scarred and bruised and hardly able to, like, walk sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you've picked yourself back up and gone to another event and thrown yeah. yourself off another jump. That is the commitment it takes to get yeah, yeah, yeah. to get a, to where you yeah, are now. Last, the end of last season was definitely tough. We, we had, yeah, there, was, there, was many, there was many issues, but there was, uh, we, we fought for it, it was worth it. That's how you've become a pro at anything. Yeah. You've just got to, you've got to put the time in and that like, yeah, it's quite literally put yourself off the floor. Yeah. And when things are hurting, just get through it and do just it. Keep it's, going. Uh, so yeah, it was good. It's so inspirational, Jake, yeah. Cool, so we finished this thing. <laughs> like, yeah. We could talk for hours on this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyone wondering what this is? It's literally just the cheapest Shimano road caliper that exists. Because I've almost ridden every road caliper that exists now and I hate all of them. So I just can't find one that works. <laughs> so I guess this... no one really makes a brake caliper for dirt jumps, do they? No, and you can't use you can't use mountain bike ones because there's so much cable friction through a gyro. I mean, and what do you use a brake for in dirt jumping? It's not obvious from the outsider as to... You're not actually allowed to ride any of our events with no brakes. The features are so big. If you do need to stop, you sort of need a brake. But actually, I mean, at least I do, or a lot of other riders will as well. For tricks like tail whips and stuff, use a brake because it stops the wheel rotating. It's just the bike weighs a lot less when the wheel's not spinning. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, interesting. So if the yeah, bikes, yeah. if the bike's spinning round, it's going, all it's pushing through the air. Yeah. So if the wheel's spinning. Yeah. Acting like a massive gyroscope, trying yeah, to stay it's, upright. Yeah, more, yeah. more wind hits the wheel when it's yeah, spinning yeah. than if the wheel's yeah. stationary. It passes through easy. So the bike actually feels a lot lighter when you pull the brake. Even a fancy chain from Gusset. Is that a Gusset rainbow anodized chain. Yep. This, this purple's probably not going to hang around for long. There is, hopefully, a new bike again soon. Another new bike? Yeah, so, the, this, is, this is last year's bike. Ah, so you've got a whole, a whole new dirt jump bike is in the pipeline, is it? Yep, whenever they get released. Have you seen it yet? Have you seen pictures? I've not seen pictures. I just know what colour they're going to be. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Exciting when they all get released. You've got a few bikes coming to you from GT. Uh, yeah, they've so. actually supported me with a downhill bike, an enduro bike, a gravel bike, and a e-bike. Excellent. So I think you're going to really enjoy the e-bikes. When we were up in Scotland having our staff party, um, e-bikes are so much fun. So oh, I think incredible. you'll probably ride quite that quite a bit. Yeah. But what's really... the idea with the downhill bike and the enduro bike? Uh, just... The downhill bike I'm actually going to take to New Zealand with me. Uh, yeah. Just for having fun just fun yeah yeah um and again the enduro bike is probably just going to be something i'll ride hopefully start riding a bit more uh, and hopefully can get into doing uh bigger events so like just bigger jumps kind of something i'd be keen to explore yeah and what's with the gravel bike jake um oh, i just wanted a gravel bike because <laughs> i think they're so cool so <laughs> excited to see what's possible on one. I actually just wanted one to um, maybe make a little like, edit on. I don't know. I just want to see what's possible can, on can a we, bike. Can we test it? Yeah, can, can for me, sure. Can we me can... and Jake, other Jake, go out and do a test ride on it for the channel? I think that'd be cool. I think, I think we'd really do like that. Do a review. <laughs> just don't be too mean about it. What do you mean? Well, you know. <laughs> to be honest, it looks quite, I mean, it's the style in it is very GT, isn't it? It's got that triple triangle, that little gap on it, isn't it? It's a yeah. carbon frame as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I'm interested to see. Do you want some grease on those threads? Well, I was thinking they won't fall off if they've got no grease on them. Fair enough. 
completely different attitude, isn't it? It's like I don't want stuff yeah, to come loose. Don't want so. things to come loose. So worst case, they get seized on. But it'd almost be a good thing for what. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when they come loose. So. <laughs> There'll be so many of our audience completely wincing at the thought of like. <laughs> I mean, if they just seen how tight I just put that back wheel, there'll be people. Yeah, stuff's tight. Some nice finishing touches on this GT. It's like a, a nice um, matte black. Yeah, the paint's actually yeah. really good. It's thick. Like you can tell instantly that there's like several layers of paint on there. Yeah, it's really nice. It's, uh, I right. guess you've got to on a dirt jump bike. It's um. Yeah. Well, it survived one ride without getting any scratches. Shh. You weren't supposed to have ridden it yet, Jake. I know. <laughs> I got told off for that. But, but I got excited. How, how can you just leave a brand new frame sat there if you're meant to go ride? You can't, can you? I love how you're better than getting to sponsors already. You're meant to like, leave it in pristine condition so for you can get video, like, but... glossy, glossy shots of it all like looking shiny and new out of the box. And Jake's like, nah, I don't want to go ride it. Yeah, but before I actually, yeah, I actually turned up, this bike was already built. I've just taken it apart and now I'm putting it back together. This is, I was committed. Oh, it's good to see you're still lubing your cables though. Oh, there's nothing worse than, a, than a, a, a gyro that feels like it's got sand in it though. And so for any of our audience actually that aren't familiar with dirt jumping, I guess it kind of works more like Formula One than normal cycling. So there's about 20 riders that are in Crankworks, is that right? Uh, 14. 14, 14 riders. So 14 riders in the world get invited to come to this event. Because I mean, the courses are so epic that probably only about 14 riders are actually good enough to ride. I oh, know there's a lot of people that yeah. could ride, but just actually getting there. Is, it is does the strike habit. me like the Formula One thing where like you've got to get your super license and then you've got to get through the brand sponsorship and go through all the steps. And there's a lot of process to get there, yeah. definitely. It's one of those events that you can't just sign up for, is it? You can't just put your name on an entry list and say, like a triathlon or a road bike race and just turn up and do it. Is it? So where and when is the first event, Jake? Um, the first event, Rotorua, New, New Zealand. Zealand. So yeah, I'm flying out to New Zealand on the 28th of Feb. So just, uh, just over a month now. So you've got like, a, um, just over a month till you fly, you've got two weeks worth of practice and like... Yeah, two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, two, two weeks of riding in Queenstown before. Uh, and then head over to Rotorua for probably a week yeah. or two in that, to, there, and then head into uh, Australia uh, after that. Yeah, I don't actually know what I'm doing yet, but yeah. you got some friends over there, haven't you? So yeah, yeah, a, a couple of my friends live over there. Now, I think you're so. going to meet a whole load of riders as well. And I guess they'll all be doing a similar thing, like not flying back to the home country just for the yeah, sake of Yeah, I think of a, a few, few people weeks. will. So yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to see Hang around. Where, where we end up. And, and do you get a chance to practice on the course? Like, what's the practice time you're going to get? Um, on the on the course, well, it'll be the event will be on the twenty second or the twenty third, and yeah. well, the first day of practice will be the sixteenth, depending okay. on weather. So you get a good few days, I suppose. Yeah, it should be a good few days, um, but weather and the fact that it's going towards winter in New Zealand, and there's, yeah, there's a there's a lot that goes into account being in New Zealand at that time of year. Oh, of course, yeah, because it's going to be like it just, always gets it always rains. It's going to be there right autumn, I suppose, isn't it? So always rains there. So. Yeah. And what happens in bad weather, obviously high wind isn't great, but... Well, they just... usually won't ride if it's windy, won't ride if it's wet. We'll only ride if it's nice weather. Oh, fingers crossed, it'd be devastating if that's a... Yeah, no, it, it will run, it's just when it'll run. If it runs according to schedule, it'll probably be the first time in 10 years it's run according to schedule. <laughs> yeah, I that's think, true, actually. I, yeah. I don't <laughs> think it ever runs according to schedule. So winning Rookie of the Year only gets you into the first round of yeah. Crankworks. It's just... So it's up to you then to uh, keep earning enough points to stay in Crankworks. Yeah, it is literally Rookie of the Year is just a wild card into the yeah. first year, in, into the first yeah. event. And I guess you've either got to score enough points at Rotorua to stay on the tour, or you've got to go and do some gold events to sort of stay in the... Uh, yeah, I yeah. either have to... I'll, if, if, if I was to get, say, top eight at Rotorua, I believe that will get me enough to stay on for sure. Yeah, so there's 14 uh, riders, you've got to be in the top 50%. Probably, yeah, maybe yeah. top 10 would probably still be okay. Yeah. But I won't really think about it until I'm there. I don't really. I mean, I really admire your attitude to yeah, that. I, I'll think just... I, I think I'd be freaking out. And are we going to see you in the UK competing at all? Anything? Um, if, I'm, if, if, I, if I'm around, I'd love to compete in the UK because that's where it all started. Yeah. So, yeah, if I'm, if I'm around, I'll, I'll, I'll turn up and go and, go and have fun, whether it's competing or just going to watch. And... The Crankworks, I mean, for me, it's like you, it's one of them places you. You dream of riding one day, maybe. 
It was, yeah. yeah I, it's it's, never I really do. I remember this time last year, 2022, we had a really bad year in the shop. It was really quite hard. And at the start of 2023, we had like a little bit of team meeting and saying, you know, come on, we've got to like bounce back from this and what's going on. And I remember that, that meeting, you were saying, oh, I want to go and do a couple of races in Europe, you know, just see how I get on. Can I book some holiday? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I turned into... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, uh, turned into actually spending most of my summer in Europe with a load of random people that are now really good friends. So yeah, yeah this last last year was yeah last year was insane, and I mean I hope this year's as good, yeah, if not I, better. But I mean I will always look back on 2023 as the year when my uh, WhatsApp and in contact just said, "Paul, I've just been invited to this. I'm sorry I won't be at work next week." Yeah, it, yeah, it was <laughs> like, oh yeah, I just need a week off to like, well, I'm actually not going to be here for six. So yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was exciting. I mean, it was, it was stressful cool. to to cover it, but it was so exciting to watch you as well. And I'd, yeah, I'd do it again any day of the week, but um, because it was so exciting to try and get you there. And um, yeah, it was wicked. It was yeah. So big deep breath. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Yeah, it's not, um, not long now. It's yeah, it's weird thinking about it. Like, I mean, in in like November, December, when it was like, like it's ages away, and now it's like. Yeah, November, December, you pretty much stopped working here. There's a few days here and there, and it was like, because by that time, agents were calling you, brands were calling you, you had a lot of decisions to make. Yeah. And there was a lot going on. We could see that. that mm, yeah, there was a lot, um, yeah, there was a, bit, there was a lot, so. And then when it looked like you were gonna have the opportunity to go pro, you'd been practicing. Like, if you yeah. watch, follow Jake on TikTok, you've been you've been putting the hours in. I've been trying to be healthier, yeah. going to the gym. and. Then I have, also, I've seen you in the gym, yeah. good. So yeah, 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 in the gym and in the, just just riding more just it makes a difference the gym work for you is what like bone density strength just, what you're doing yeah, just is power yeah. yeah 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 just yeah just the like just the the, the fast movement of, of of heavy stuff and yeah and, and being able to hit the floor hard <laughs> It's all the worst, ca worst case, be prepared <laughs> to hit the floor. Well, Jake, it's been a pleasure working with you from the age of 17 when you joined us in the Apprentice yeah. to seeing you now join it's the Pro Circuit. So I think all of us here from Updeck and all of our viewers wish you the best of luck next year. So uh, congratulations, awesome. Thank buddy. Thank you. And well done. Cool. Thanks for sharing that time with us. No worries. Um, YouTube channel? Just Jake Atkinson. TikTok? YouTube. Jake Atkinson, but Jake with two E's and also the same on Instagram. So yeah, if you want Get to follow, follow along. Go follow Jake. Thanks, Jake. See where we end up. Cool.